our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Today's project is this cool little one, two, three, four drawer chest. And what makes it special is it's a sewing chest. It's probably from the 40s, maybe the 30s. It's uh, kind of like that Duncan Fife, Chippendale style that was so popular back then. It uh, needs to be completely refinished and it's missing, unfortunately, one of the original drawer pulls. So I'll either try to find something that looks like this or take these top ones off, move this down here, and put a couple of straight poles on here. But this project's going to have to wait for a little while. And the reason is we have no power. Power's been on and off for the last 12, 14 hours. It is completely off now. And it's off for most of the county that I live in. And you may ask yourself why. I will show you that now. Yes, Virginia, this is North Georgia. Over the last 24 hours, we've had a freak snowstorm. It's dumped about 12 inches of heavy, heavy wet snow here where we live. A uh, little bit less in metro Atlanta, a little bit more uh, to the north, and particularly up in the mountains. But the power is completely out, and nothing is moving. So we're going to have to wait on this. But while we're waiting for the power to come back on, let me show you a couple of updates in the shop. And I beg your patience because this is all the light I can get in here with the with the power out. But if you remember correctly, we had this uh, antique blacksmith's leg post vise. Had, didn't have it mounted. What I wound up doing was going to home uh, Harbor Freight, but they had a sale on these grinder stands. And I cut an inch and a half off this post with a grinder. And then I drilled, Abby wants to check my work. And then I drilled a one inch hole through this leg here. This is uh, really good quality, believe it or not, cast iron. And it took me almost an hour to get through that uh, using my drill press and three different size drills. But I finally got through that. So there's a hole in this bottom piece that allows this leg post to, to contact the ground. And then although I really didn't want to, I was, uh, I was required, I had to because otherwise it would knock over, is I, lagged, I bolted this into the floor with some concrete bolts. So this is nice and sturdy now. It's out of the way. I can use it. It doesn't look too awful bad, I don't think. And it was only 30 bucks for the stand. It was on sale. I had 25% off coupon. So Yahoo for Harbor Freight. And the next bit of good news is I spent a full day installing an electric heater here in the garage. It works great. The story on this is, is a friend of mine found it at a yard sale for 10 bucks. He had no use for it. Thank you, Marty. So he sold it to me. The prior owner put a very, very heavy, I think it's 14 foot long cable on it. Now this heater is rated for 20 amps, it requires a 30 amp circuit. That cable's good for 50 amps, and that's 220. So I, rather than hard wire it into the circuit I ran, what I did is I mounted a, a 220 outlet on the wall. You can see it over there. And that will allow me to unplug the electric heater and plug in another 220 volt tool if I ever get one, like a welder or something like that. So that worked out pretty well for me. What I, I had to do was run conduit up from the attic because this is a nine foot ceiling and there are actually two, two ceiling sill plates, if that's the term you would use. And I just didn't have a bell hangers bit long enough to drill through them from the attic. So I had to use the conduit, but it came out great. So whenever we get power back, we'll get started on this piece. This is really just a strip and refinish job. You can see that the finish is worn off. There's stains here. But this top here opens up and there's all sorts of little places for spools. I'll have to cut a bunch of these little dowels out and, uh, and put them in there. And there's all sorts of thread here. This little piece here pulls out and gives you access to that top drawer. One of the things that we've learned from buying and selling is the adage, unique sells is a good thing to keep in mind when you're out buying. Uh, in the last six years, we've never seen anything like this one. We've had a couple of sewing cabinets, but they're always a, just a more generic size and a more generic shape. This one's really cool, and I think it's uh, it's going to be spectacular and something someone's really going to want once it's refinished. So that'll be our next project. Well, anyways, I will bring you back when we have power and we're able to get started on this. And in the meantime, wish us luck here in Georgia as we dig out from 
I guess it's Snowpocalypse 2. I'll bring you back. We're only a couple of hours later. Power's back on. Thanks to Georgia Power and uh, Copy MC guys, who I'm sure have been up all night working on the power. We appreciate you. Meanwhile, back here in our little shop, let's get this uh, thread out of here and let's strip off the hardware and let's get this piece stripped down. And I got you down inside the cabinet where you can see this mounting hardware and how it works. There's two size dowels. These are the bigger ones for the bigger spools. They've got grooves cut in them and they slot into these brackets and snap in and they're tight and it's hard to get those off when you've got those spools on there and it looks like every spool that was on there was original and there wasn't one missing and I can imagine why I can't see how particularly an older woman maybe with arthritis could ever hope to get those out of there that's a that's a difficult design I mean I struggled with it but that's that's how they would come back out and it's fairly easy when you can grab the dowel in the middle but when the spools on there you can't grab anything it's uh, it's not easy to get them out and then the ones up here are just a little bit smaller and the drawers are out of it and the hardware is off that's the hardware and we're gonna have to try to find another piece actually two uh, one of the pieces was missing this little rosette here and if you look at the looking at the drawer construction you can see it's dovetailed and then it was routed out for the drawer slides it's all solid wood construction as you would expect and I'll take you and show you the inside of the case and here's our case and it's pretty dirty it's gonna need a good scrubbing next step is a bath and then one of the drawers as we always have had a loose corner and some damage so we've got that all glued back in this is just going to set I did that with yellow glue so the next step is to give this old girl a bath so let me go inside and get some stuff mixed up and I'll be right back bath time When I'm cleaning a piece, one of the things I'm looking for are structural issues that I would have otherwise missed. In this case, we have a loose front leg. Now, there's not a lot of weight on this cabinet. You don't have to worry about this thing getting dragged across the floor and tearing its leg off, but what the heck, let's do it right. If we take a look, you can see that the glue joint has failed between the leg and this uh, apron piece, which is screwed in. And if you swing around and look at the other leg, which is still fast, you'll see it has a glue block right there in the corner and hang on we'll swing you around and you can see our corner that glue block is missing and that's one of the reasons this thing is loose now I always save old glue blocks I'm sure you're all laughing and you can't imagine that I wouldn't so I've got this one and if we put it in here it works out just fine but when you come to the front you can see it's a little bit tall and obviously that would show under the apron so what we're going to do is cut it, cut it below this apron so it's not visible. Do that on the bandsaw, then we'll glue it in, we'll glue this leg up, clamp it, and this repair will be done. And here's our corner. I've got the glue cleaned up. Glue squeeze, or the remainder of the glue from the last glue block. There's our new glue block. It'll go in just like that. You can see we've cut back those corners so they drop down below the level of the apron. So what we'll do next, excuse my big fat fingers, is we'll glue this, force glue down in here, and glue this joint, put this glue block in here, clamp everything up and let it set. And I've got glue forced into this joint. What I'm doing is just pulling this apart and working this glue in here with a thin razor blade. I had some really uh, good viewer tips from a, a viewer. He suggested using some uh, like dental floss to pull the glue down into the joint, which is an excellent idea, and also suggested compressed air 
I kind of embarrassingly so will tell you that I tried the compressed air and all I did was spray glue all over my glasses. So I'm going to still work on that technique, but you can see that we're getting glue worked right into that joint just the way we want. So we get squeeze out when it comes back together. So we've got glue on all three sides of that loose joint. We will put in our glue block that will help support it even further. And there's our glue block in. So what I'll do is clamp this nice and tight, clean it up, and we'll let it set. Okay, that corner is all put back together. So we got this setting up and that drawer over there is setting up. So we're going to be on hold for a little while. So I figure it's a great time for me to go inside and get some lunch and take it easy for a while. So I will bring you back when this all sets up and the next step is going to be to strip this whole thing down. Good morning. Our repairs have had a chance to set up overnight. Let's take off the clamps and see how we did. And you remember this leg was loose? Not anymore. This drawer repair I caught after uh, we stopped filming yesterday. I came back out to check on things in the shop and I noticed it. It was a piece of loose veneer here. We glued that back down. That's nice and tight. That'll get uh, touched up when we get done stripping this. Let's go take a look at our other drawer. And if you remember correctly, this is the drawer that's got some damage to the back corner. But what we did is put it back together so it was no longer loose. And the drawer is nice and tight. This, this piece here that's chipped away, I'm just going to leave that. You know, this could be repaired. We could cut this out and lay a new piece. Or we could uh, use um, epoxy putty on here. This is the back of the drawer. It, it, it's just, it's not worth repairing it. I think it's fine. As long as the drawer is solid, which it now is because we took this joint apart and re-glued it, all will be well. So we'll leave that just the way it is. Okay, it's time to strip this old girl. Methylene chloride stripper. I put it on with a chip brush. I take it off after it's had a chance to set and loosen the finish. You've seen me do this a thousand times. Just a word of caution if you're using this indoors like I am today. Make sure you've got proper ventilation or you're wearing a respirator. This stuff's not good to breathe. And once it's had a chance to work, which this really needs a little bit more time, I just scrape it off with this little plastic scraper. She's all stripped. You can see that beautiful mahogany veneer. It's got uh, some surface issues that need to be addressed. Little dents and scratches that need to be touched up. And the whole piece is going to have to be light sanded. Okay, it's time to light sand. I'm going to use 150 on a block. And then any place I can't get in there with the block, I'll do it by hand. Always with the grain. And there you go. That's what we're going to be doing. I got the whole cabinet to do. I'll bring you back. We've got a pretty deep gouge here on one side. This is way too deep to try to steam up, so I'm going to fill it in. I'm using Mohawk's Quick Fill. You've seen me use this before. I believe it's a wax and epoxy mix. And it wants a heat sink.
And using this heated applicator, we just lay that material into that scratch. I'm going to pick you up now. We're going to use this little rasp that comes with the kit. And it takes off any other material that's above the surface. And there's your repair. And I'll go over this with a little bit of steel. We'll just smooth it out just a little bit. But that'll that'll disappear under the finish. Let me go through and find any more of these that need attention. I'll fix it in the same way and I'll bring you back. And we're ready to apply color. Because this piece stands on its own, it doesn't have to match anything. I'm just going to go with a brown mahogany wiping stain. And then if we have to adjust the color later on, we can with toners. But it's a whole lot easier for me just to go ahead and use a wiping stain. Just going to apply it with a foam brush. One of the things about a foam brush is when you turn it sideways, the material flows out, so you want to be careful. And I've got you up here on the top as I wipe this off. And I think that was a, that was a good color choice. A very good color choice for this piece. Okay, let me get to work. I'll bring you back when it's all stained. And here she is with a first coat of brown mahogany wiping stain on it. I think the color was a good choice. I think it looks good. We're going to let this dry for a while. Stain's dry. Let's seal this project up. And yes, I did the drawers as well. I spared you the uh, agonizing boredom of watching me shoot coat after coat after coat on this. But it's got two coats of sealer and two coats of semi-gloss lacquer on it now, 40 sheen. Uh, I sanded it between coats with uh, 4 aught steel wool, rubbed it down, wiped it off. Any color touch-ups that I identify that needed to be done. But uh, I think it's looking pretty good. There's our drawers. So we'll let it set overnight, and then tomorrow we will tackle building those little dowels that hold the threads, or the spools of thread, inside the cabinet, and then i got to figure out what I'm going to do for the missing hardware, and we'll be done. But I'm thinking this is going to make a very nice little sewing cabinet for someone who should be very happy to, uh, to have it. So I will bring you back tomorrow. Oh! And for those of you, and for those of you that were interested in the weather from yesterday, uh, where I live, we got a full 12 inches of snow uh, in really about 14 hours. It was it was quite impressive, um, and it warmed up by the afternoon, and much of it melted, and it warmed up today, and it's more of it's melting. And I think in a couple of days it'll all be gone, which is good because I still haven't got the leaves picked up yet. And right now they're buried under all this snow. But you can see it's, there's still snow up on the roof, the roof of the neighbor's house. And uh, back towards the patio where the sun doesn't get. But wherever the sun has hit, like the driveway here to the shop, 
uh, it's pretty well melted off. So all is well. All right, I will bring you back tomorrow and we'll finish up this sewing cabinet. Okay, it's time to, for me to make believe I have some idea what I'm doing. That's uh, not usually the case, to be honest with you. All right, we've got these pins that we have uh, that hold the small spools of thread. Um, we are, we're missing 10 of them, and we have to make them. So what I did is using my low-budget caliper is I measured the diameter of these dowels, and they're a quarter of an inch. So I went out and bought some quarter-inch dowel stock at Home Depot. It cost me 89 cents. And then I measured the dimensions of these pieces. And hopefully you can see this. But basically, it's one and five eighths inches long. There's one and a quarter inch is between the two grooves. And the groove depth is a sixteenth of an inch. So let me show you how I measured that. I measured the length with the caliper. You can use a tape measure if you don't have a caliper. It's not that important. But there's there's how I measured my length. Now the distance from the edge of the dowel to the beginning of the groove is this much, it's one eighth of an inch. Now the dimension that is probably the most difficult to measure is the depth of the groove and I'm just using this depth gauge, you can make one out of a cork and a piece of wire if you have to but it just sets right in there and it turns out it's a sixteenth of an inch which makes great sense because that means that it's leaving one eighth of an inch or half the dowel thickness in the dowel. So the question then becomes, now that we have these measurements, how do we set up our table saw to cut them? Well, the depth of this cut, the depth of the groove, is nothing more than the height of our blade. So what I did, I have, there's two ways of doing it. You can measure it, but I'm lazy. I put this right in the center of the blade and I raised the blade until it, it touched this one. And then I ran a test piece and, and, the, and the measurement was correct. So I know now that I have to have my blade one eighth, I'm sorry, one eighth of an inch in from here. So I set my fence, and I'll show you in just a second, at one eighth. Now normally when you are cross cutting and you have your fence against the piece, that's a bad thing because it can catch and kick back. But since we're just grooving this, I'm okay leaving this pushed up against the fence. And actually it helps quite a bit because I have to turn this, you know, twist this as I'm cutting to get the groove even. And it allows me to do that. If I didn't have uh, the fence to push against, I would certainly be doing this as I turned it and my cut would be uneven. And then I just move my fence over this distance here, which is an inch and a quarter. And I cut my second groove, and then I'll cut the piece off on the bandsaw so I don't have to keep messing around with the, uh, with the saw blade height. Now, the reason that I'm, I have to stop and cut rather than just continually groove is that I don't want to lose the long piece of dowel that basically sticks out like this because that's what I'm using to turn with. I don't want to get my hands that close to the blade. So hopefully that makes sense. There's our, our blade and our 1 8 inch distance, and I'll run one through here and I'll show you how we did it. Contact!
really a cosmetic product. And there we are. There's our piece. Okay, I got a bunch more of these to cut. And it pops right in. It's a whole lot easier to deal with than the other ones. Okay, I got a, uh, six more of these to do, so I will bring you back. And after about 15 minutes and 89 cents worth of dowel, we've got all the dowels that we need to hang the spools of thread. These were all intact. If you remember, these were the big ones. I'll get those reinstalled. And just to let you know what we did with the hardware, I took the hardware off and I made these. These are inch and a quarter wood poles and I just dyed them with brown mahogany stain and lacquered them and I'm in the process of finishing them up here. I initially was going to try to use just those on the top and these on the bottom and they just look terrible. So we're going to go with all wood. It also takes it away from that Duncan Fife style. And then this tray is back installed. This needed a little bit of work and needs to be glued up. So we are almost done. I'll bring you back for the final beauty shots when the lacquer dries on the rest of the um, drawer pulls. Well, here she is all done. We've got all the dowels inserted. There's three uh, spools of thread that came with it. And then these bigger spools of I, I, some kind of sewing string, I guess. These are all original. This is the only one that's missing the label. And none of them have been used. I think that's pretty cool. While I was at it, I made up some extra uh, dowels for here in case the new owner loses them. And as I showed you before, this little tray comes right out. Uh, I'm real happy the way this came out. I think these knobs <clears throat> look real nice, and it gets it away from that Duncan Fife style, which some people like, and unfortunately many people really don't. I think it's a little bit more contemporary looking, maybe even a little bit towards, well, I don't want to say shaker style, but it still looks like an antique, but it doesn't jar you with, that, with those Duncan Fife uh, poles. So I'll bring you in for some close-ups and uh, say goodbye. So anyways, listen, from our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia, best regards, thanks for watching, take good care, and we will see you next video. Bye.